episode 161. He worked behind their back. Monday was the day the purchase of Apex technology would be completed. Chase came to the office early in the morning to prepare, and Missy assisted him. At 10 o'clock, Harold appeared in the meeting room on time, dressed in a black suit and followed by a secretary. Missy led them into the meeting room and handed the prepared contract documents over. Mr. Jones, please wait for a moment. Mr. Luther is to be here soon. Missy nodded slightly, then walked out of the meeting room to prepare some hot coffee for the two of them. Not long after, Chase finished his first meeting and walked straight into the meeting room. Sorry to keep you waiting. Harold shook his head. He'd only waited for a few minutes and it wasn't a problem. He asked his secretary to pass the company's information to Chase. You should already know the basic details of my company, but this contains the details of Apex's employees and finances right now. Take a look at it. Chase flipped through a few pages, and except for the employee details, the information was not much different from what he already knew. Closing the file, Chase leaned back in his seat and said, I have no problem with this, and I already sent a digital file of the purchase contract to your email. Do you have any other requests? I only hope that after being bought by Luther Inc., I will still have most of my employees. Harold had built Apex technology from the ground up and recruited everyone there, and they had worked together for years. He didn't want to lose that because of this acquisition. Chase nodded in agreement. Of course, you'll still be in charge of the technology. After all, you're the most familiar with it, right? After both parties confirmed that there were no flaws in the contract, they quickly signed it. After everything was settled, Chase had Missy file the information before sending Harold away. When she walked out of the meeting room, Missy accidentally bumped into a colleague and dropped the documents on the floor. The staff list of Apex technology happened to be flipped open, and she roughly looked through it. Other than the people she'd met a few days ago, she didn't see the high school student that Harold had mentioned before. When Harold walked out, he saw Missy standing there staring at the contract and wondered if there were some flaws in the contract. So he walked over and asked, What's wrong? Is there a problem? Missy smiled and shook her head. She closed the file and thought for a while before asking, You told me that your company has a high school student I don't think I saw him in the file. You're talking about Greg, right? There was only one person who was not on the list and was still a high school student. You said his name is Greg? Missy looked at Harold in surprise, frowned, and felt that something wasn't right. Yes, his name is Greg Danvers. He's still a high school student and is only helping out in the company. I wanted to wait until he graduates from high school to have him join Apex. Harold was full of praise for Greg's skills. Although he was young, it didn't affect his judgment at all. He was a rare talent. Missy was stunned when she heard the full name. Some words were stuck in her throat, and she didn't know how to say them. She tightly gripped the contract in her hand and mentioned the name of her brother's school. Harold admitted that Greg was from that school, and everything fell into place. The Greg he spoke of was her younger brother. So he's your younger brother? Harold was as surprised as Missy. From Missy's reaction, it was clear that she hadn't known. The last year of high school was the most important period, and many parents didn't want their children to divert their attention. The reason Greg hid this from her was probably that he had considered that. Missy handed the contract to her other colleagues and returned to her desk to search for her phone. She called her brother, but kept getting sent to voicemail being, and when she looked at the time, Missy realized that the class might not have ended yet, so Greg couldn't answer. Chase came out of his office and saw Missy holding her phone and checking the time with Harold beside her. 
He walked over and looked back and forth between the two of them. What happened? Why do you look so anxious? Greg actually got a job behind my back? He's a senior in high school, and the most important thing he should do is study, not work. Missy's anxiety was obvious. If these things delayed his studies, not only could he have trouble getting into college, he could ruin his future. Harold tried to comfort her. Actually, Greg's doing quite well. You don't have to worry about it. If it weren't her brother, perhaps Missy wouldn't mind. In order to not burden Harold, Missy did her best to suppress her emotions. She saw him off and returned to her office, but she wasn't in the mood to continue working. After thinking for a while, she decided to take the rest of the day off to go to school and ask Greg exactly what was going on. Wait for me. I'll go with you. After saying that, Chase closed the file on his desk, took the key and jacket, and walked out of the office with her. Sitting in the car and looking at the scenery outside the window, Missy was irritated. She opened the window and the cool breeze lifted her hair as the chill dissipated the heat in the car. Then the phone rang and broke the silent atmosphere. Greg's name appeared on the screen and Missy instantly picked up. Sis, are you looking for me? Greg was a little short of breath. He should have just finished class. And when he saw her call, he hurriedly called her back. Yes, there are some things I need to talk to you about. Wait for me at the school entrance and don't go anywhere. After saying that, Missy hung up the phone and rubbed her hair in frustration. The busy tone from the phone made Greg confused. He didn't understand what was wrong with his sister today. The tone of her voice just now was unpleasant, but he was sure that he hadn't done anything bad recently. Her mood should have had nothing to do with him. Greg obediently went to a shady place at the school entrance and waited for Missy. Episode 162 Ask Her Brother Greg stood by the school entrance in a daze. There were students coming in and out of the school, but he waited obediently for Missy to arrive. A car stopped in front of him and Missy got out. Greg was happy to see his sister, so he walked over quickly. When Missy saw Greg, her anger had reached its peak and she walked up to him and pulled his ear. Missy, Missy, what are you doing? Greg shouted. What am I doing? Do you know that you're still a student? Do you know how important your time is right now? Missy fussed. Of course, I know, let go of me. Greg tried his best to save his ear from his sister's devil claw. You... Missy was even angrier. The situation was in a deadlock. The students passing by were attracted by the commotion and gathered around to see what was happening. Chase, who was standing at the side, felt that if this continued, they might be trending on the internet again tomorrow. Chase, Luther's wife, argues with the boy in front of a high school. So Chase came forward to separate the two of them. This isn't a good place to talk. Let's go somewhere else, he said as he pulled Missy away. Greg covered his ears, which had been pulled red and felt wronged. Who would pull someone's ears at the entrance of the school the moment they came up? And this was his school. It was so embarrassing. Missy calmed down as Chase took her away and looked at the crowd surrounding them. Even though she was angry, she knew that they shouldn't talk there. Come with me, Missy said fiercely to Greg. After saying that, she got in the car with Chase. Although Greg felt wronged, he didn't dare to ignore his elder sister's words. So he slowly followed them to the car. Chase drove them to a nearby restaurant and booked a private room. After ordering, the room fell silent. The first to speak was Greg. He said, 
Missy, why did you suddenly come to find me? Aren't you busy? Missy held down the impulse to scold Greg like she had when he was young. She tried to calm herself down and said to him, Tell me the truth. Do you know someone named Harold Jones? Did you get a job without telling me? Greg heard Missy's question and felt a little weak, but he forced himself to remain calm. Yes, but I didn't mean to hide it from you. You're always busy and I didn't want to bother you, but I know what I'm doing. After Missy heard that, her anger was ignited again. This brat knew what he was doing? What were you thinking? Tell me everything that happened, Missy said fiercely. Greg felt she was overreacting, but he didn't dare to express it, so he slowly told Missy everything. Greg happened to meet Harold at a science and technology competition and gave him some suggestions for a troublesome project. Harold appreciated his advice, and later on, he used his free time to help Harold with some projects and earn a little money. After Missy learned the whole story, she calmed down a lot, but she was still angry that Greg hid the truth from her. Moreover, with her current salary, it wasn't like she couldn't support a student like him. You're a senior in high school. You should be focused on learning. Making money is what I should do. It's not like I can't support you, so you don't need to use your spare time to earn money, Missy said. Greg had nothing to say because he'd hidden the truth, and he knew that it was normal for his sister to be angry about his studies. Focus on school, not working, Missy said again. But Greg said weakly, it really won't affect school. I'm already way ahead, and this is all just a refresher for me. But you didn't have to hide it from me. Missy was helpless. I was just afraid that you'd get angry. You're always hard at work, and you give money to our parents. I'm not young anymore, so I can take care of myself. You don't have to pay for me anymore. Greg said... Missy felt more and more helpless as she listened. She didn't know what to say to refute her brother. He was smart, and his grades were consistently good. So she didn't even realize he was doing something else. But he was still a child, and he shouldn't have to earn money. She wanted him to have an ordinary high school life. All right. I'm going to the restroom. You guys can start eating without me. Missy got up and left the private room. She needed to calm down and think about how to deal with Greg alone. She was afraid that she would be convinced by him, so she had to think about it carefully. Once Missy left, only Greg and Chase remained in the private room. And Greg frowned. Chase, if you make my sister do dangerous things like racing and she gets hurt, I won't forgive you. Chase didn't answer him, but looked at him leisurely. Obviously, he didn't take the kid's words seriously. He was just thinking about when Missy would come back. Greg was angered by Chase's attitude. If you don't intend to take good care of my sister, then you should divorce as soon as possible. She doesn't need you to support her. You don't have to worry about that. Missy is my wife. Of course I'll take good care of her, Chase said. Episode 163, Understanding. Greg was furious at Chase's words, so he stood up and said... She is my sister, and you got married to her by accident. Do you expect me to believe you actually care about her? No matter what you say, Missy is my wife and the name beside mine on our marriage certificate. Chase answered casually. 
Greg couldn't win against him, so he angrily returned to his seat and didn't speak anymore. At that moment, there was a knock on the door, and in the next second, the waiter came in with the food. They ordered and placed it on the table. Chase and Greg sat in silence without eating, and the waiter left without closing the door behind himself, saying there was more food coming. Missy came back not long after with moisture still on her face. Clearly, she'd washed her face when she went to the restroom to calm down. When she got back, she felt the subtle energy between Greg and Chase. Hey, what's wrong with you two? The food's already here. You didn't have to wait for me. Missy said as she sat back down beside Chase. Chase answered Missy's question. It's not all here. Oh, I see. Only then did Missy realize that there were still a few items that had not been served. Greg saw the tacit understanding between the two of them and looked at Missy with a resentful gaze. His sister had forgotten her own brother when she had a husband. Missy seemed to feel Greg's resentment and turned to look at him. I just calmed down and thought it through. I won't stop you if you want to work. You're old enough now, and I can't stop you. Sis. Missy raised her head, and Greg stopped talking, quietly waiting for Missy to continue. However, the prerequisite is that your grades must not fall. You must remember that you're a senior high school student. Your grades and getting into college come first. When you go to college, I won't worry about you so much, Missy said. Greg's heart warmed. It felt great to be understood and supported by his family. I promise, Missy, he said firmly. Missy saw the seriousness in Greg's eyes and felt relieved. Her brother was beginning to grow up and he'd need to experience life for himself. She couldn't keep worrying about him forever. Enough, enough. I know all the food's not here yet, but let's eat. Missy said with a smile. Chase looked at Missy gently. Greg was growing up, and Missy was maturing too. Chase rubbed Missy's head, ruffling her hair. Missy was shocked and moved Chase's hand, her face turning red. What are you doing? My little brother is here. Missy said to Chase in a low voice. She held his hand tightly, afraid that he would do something unexpected. Okay. Chase smiled and took his hand back. Greg was caught off guard and stopped in the middle of grabbing a plate. Missy put her hand to her mouth and cleared her throat in an attempt to keep her image. Except for the blush on her face, it was as if nothing had happened. Greg smiled. Maybe this man really was going to take good care of his sister. She wasn't much older than him, but had been through so much. But it was good to see her like this. A few waiters came in with the last few items they ordered and set them up, taking the attention off of Missy. She really wanted to thank them. They'd arrived at just the right time. When they left, they closed the door for them. Missy quickly changed the subject. Greg, remember to save all the money you earn now. Don't spend it recklessly, and you'll be set for when you get married in the future. Now let's have a good meal. A smile appeared on Greg's face. Okay, okay. I'll save the money for my future wife. You don't have to worry. Also, I'll take care of mom and dad. No matter what, you can't tell them that you have a job. Missy warned sternly. She didn't want her parents to find out Greg had money and suck him dry like vampires. The smile on Greg's face gradually disappeared, and Missy's heart fell. Actually, I secretly transferred some money to their account a while ago. 
Greg's voice got softer as he spoke, losing confidence. You... Missy was so angry that her fork fell to the table. Chase saw it and picked up another one for her. Greg was afraid that Missy would get angry again and added, But don't worry, Mom still doesn't know. Only then did Missy relax. What were you thinking? Missy said. I didn't do it on purpose. Greg answered weakly. I was wondering why they hadn't asked me about money recently. Don't send them any more money. They can't know that you have a job. I'm here and I can support them, Missy said to Greg. Greg replied that he knew and ate quietly, picking at his food, afraid that he would make his sister angry again. Missy really didn't know whether to laugh or cry when she saw Greg's sheepishness. She pushed a plate toward him. Eat. Growing boys need food. Episode 164. A Familiar Back. Missy sat in the front passenger seat and looked through the window at the familiar streets. She hadn't expected Greg to be so successful at such a young age. It really made her happy. But he had to be responsible too early so she was proud and pained. A man's deep voice interrupted her thoughts. Does your family need my help? Missy turned around and saw Chase focusing on driving ahead. She sighed helplessly. Don't give them any more money. No matter how much money you'll give them, it'll soon be used up. Chase had given them a million dollars previously. But Missy's parents had burned through it. After that, they came to ask her for money. If it continued, it would become a cycle. If it were anyone else, how much could they have done with the million dollars? Missy's father had wasted it gambling, and her mother had spent the rest. Those two people basically treated her as an ATM, and Missy was left speechless. But Chase was still thinking about them. Missy felt even more tired when she thought about that. She was really lucky to have met Chase, who could understand her this way. Hearing Missy's words, Chase frowned. Then why don't I arrange a job for your father? Having a job would give him some income at least, so they wouldn't have to keep pestering Missy. Chase only hoped that he could help Missy solve the problem but he couldn't force her or her parents to do anything. It wasn't a matter of right or wrong. It was just people being too greedy. When she heard Chase's words, Missy smiled bitterly as she shook her head. It's useless. My dad is lazy and likes gambling. He won't go to work. If Missy's father weren't like that, Missy would really want to find a good job for him. After all, Greg was maturing, but Missy's parents had always been muddle-headed. Not only had they not made any progress, but they were becoming more and more unreasonable. Missy felt tired when she thought about the things that happened at home. Now, I only hope that Greg has a good way out. With Greg's current situation, as long as he worked hard, he would definitely make great achievements in the future. In any case, Missy's parents couldn't rely on him. Even though Chase wanted to help, he could only give up after hearing what Missy said, but he still reminded her, If they come and ask you for money again, tell me. Missy smiled and felt a sweetness in her heart. I know. She wouldn't hide anything from him anymore. They had to trust each other. In the past, Missy didn't want Chase to help her because she was afraid of troubling him. But now, it was different. Now that the two of them were together, she had to face everything with him. She knew that Chase had good intentions, 
and she wouldn't reject his good intentions anymore. The two of them returned to the office and went back to their work. Since they'd been gone for the entire morning, there was a lot of work waiting for them. The rest of the office was taking an afternoon break, and someone passed by Missy's office and said, Missy, you aren't taking a break? Missy smiled and shook her head. You guys go. After they said goodbye, Missy lowered her head to focus on Chase's itinerary. An urgent knocking came from outside. Missy looked up and saw a handsome face. Chase was holding a document with a smile on his face. Missy smiled back and Chase walked over and handed the document to her. Will you help me make a copy of this document? Take it to my office later. Okay. Missy took the papers from him. Since you came over personally, just ask for a copy. Chase smiled and looked at Missy meaningfully, teasing. I just missed my wife and came to see her. Missy's face suddenly turned red. Well, I'll go and make copies. As she spoke, she rushed out as if she was running away. Looking at the woman's fleeing figure, the smile on Chase's face deepened. She was really shy. At that time, almost everyone was downstairs, so the entire office area was empty, and Missy could only hear her own footsteps. After copying the documents, Missy flipped through them and walked back. But when she passed Winston's office, she was stunned. Since the office doors were transparent, Missy could see Winston embracing a woman and kissing her passionately. The woman was dressed in black and white professional attire, and it was obvious she worked for the company. But because her back was facing Missy, she couldn't see the woman's face. However, Missy felt that the woman was somewhat familiar. Who exactly did she look like? Missy frowned and thought for a while, but couldn't place her. Maybe she just looked familiar. After all, there were many people in the company. So Missy decided not to pay it any mind. She quickened her pace and left. That was someone else's problem, so it was better for her not to get involved. After all, office relationships weren't prohibited especially since she and Chase were here. They were the leaders of office relationships. But that couple had been kissing so passionately, and Missy felt guilty for seeing it. She didn't have a habit of peeping on others. Her footsteps were getting faster and faster as if she was about to break into a run. Missy pushed open Chase's office door and barged in. Chase raised his head and frowned when he saw her flustered appearance. What if she fell down from running so fast? Missy spoke as she caught her breath. Here are the documents. Chase took the documents and put them aside. Then he looked up at Missy and asked, Why did you run so fast? I'm not in a hurry. I... Missy's mouth twitched. She thought about what she saw and did not have the nerve to say it out loud. So she made up an excuse. I really wanted to see you. As soon as she said that, she met Chase's strange gaze and instantly realized what she had said. Her face turned bright red and she wished she could find a hole and hide in it. Episode 165 Organizing travel. Well, I have to go now. Missy said quickly and was about to run away when she suddenly stopped. Wait a minute. Missy turned her head and looked at Chase in puzzlement. He pointed at a cup of coffee and said with a smile, Take this away. 
Missy's heart warmed. She directly picked up the coffee. It was hot, and the warmth passed through her hands to her heart. As she left Chase's office, she saw her colleagues coming back one after another. Missy turned and suddenly saw a familiar figure. April? April was walking toward the elevator, but it seemed like Missy was right. Missy's heart was somewhat doubtful as she watched April leave. Gradually, she started to look like the woman that Winston was kissing passionately. When that idea appeared, Missy was shocked but immediately shook her head to shake off her doubt. It couldn't be. After all, everyone was wearing professional attire, and many people were wearing black and white like her. She must have been overthinking it. But a feeling lingered in her heart, and she couldn't get rid of it. As time passed, Missy put the matter in the back of her mind. In the blink of an eye, Independence Day arrived. After Chase finished dealing with his work, he seemed to have thought of something and said to Jeremy, Call Missy over. Missy was currently in her office processing documents. It was close to the Independence Day holiday, and the work was piling up. When Missy heard that Chase had called her, she frowned slightly, but he must have had something to say to her. Do you need me for something? Missy asked. Chase heard her and raised his head, but as he was about to speak, he saw the dark circles around her eyes. If work is too tiring, just leave it to Jeremy. Jeremy stood at the side in silence. Mr. Luther never considered his feelings at all, but that was like him. Missy waved her hand and looked at Jeremy with embarrassment as she said to Chase, I'm just busy. Why were you looking for me? Chase nodded slightly and said, I want to take a seven-day trip to Miami during the holiday to reward everyone. We can provide all the food and accommodation. What do you think? Jeremy realized that he wasn't needed, so he went out. Missy nodded and walked to the sofa to sit down. After thinking for a while, she said, It's possible, but it's not realistic for everyone in the company to go. After all, everyone was busy with work throughout the year and rarely had time for family. Although the company outing would be fun, everyone might not be willing to go. Hearing Missy's words, Chase frowned. The company will pay for everything. We can afford it. He thought Missy was worried that traveling with hundreds of employees would be too expensive. Missy did not know whether to laugh or cry when she heard Chase's words. She didn't doubt Luther Inc. had enough money, but she explained her worries to Chase. That makes sense. I'll let the employees decide whether they want to go or not. Chase said after thinking for a while. That way, it could increase the employee's satisfaction. Missy nodded and smiled. That's not bad. I'll start putting things together. After leaving Chase's office, Missy gathered all the employees together. There was a lot of discussion. What's wrong, Missy? Do we have to work overtime since the holiday is coming? Some of the people who were familiar with Missy started to joke. Missy waved her hand to signal the crowd to be quiet, and she only spoke after everyone had quieted down. Do you not want to hear the good news? Missy smiled mysteriously. Missy, don't keep us guessing. Hurry up and tell us. Yeah, tell us. Everyone urged her. Seeing that, Missy no longer kept them in suspense and said in a voice that everyone could hear. Since everyone's performance in the first half of the year was good, Mr. Luther has decided to take everyone to Miami for seven days. The trip is completely free. Those who want to go can go to Jeremy to register. Those who don't want to go can enjoy a week off. 
as soon as she finished speaking. The entire floor was in an uproar. Everyone cheered and broke into discussions. No one knew who started it, but everyone gathered around Missy and said, Missy, I want to go to Miami. I want to go too. Missy was helpless. Everyone, don't rush. Go to your department head to register. They'll bring the list to me. As soon as she finished speaking, the group of people in front of her disappeared without a trace as if they were blown away by a strong wind. Missy smiled. These people really wanted to go on a vacation. It only took a trip announcement to make them excited. After Missy had collected all the registration forms, the night had turned completely dark. As the trip to Miami was going to start the next day, everyone got off work early. When Missy and Chase got home, Missy rushed into the room excitedly. Chase watched her strange behavior and followed her into the bedroom, puzzled. She was rummaging through dressers and cabinets and a trace of a smile appeared in his eyes. What are you looking for? Missy didn't even turn her head and said, We need to pack. Aren't we going to Miami tomorrow? Chase laughed involuntarily, walked behind Missy, pulled her up and said, Let's eat first. As he spoke, he pulled Missy's hand and took her to the dining table. Missy looked at his face and was stunned for a moment. Such a handsome man was her husband? She was really lucky. She started to laugh foolishly, and Chase noticed her gaze and smiled helplessly. What are you thinking about? Did you fall in love with your husband's handsome face? Missy's face turned red and she quickly lowered her head in embarrassment. She said in a muffled voice, Let's eat. Chase laughed but didn't continue teasing Missy. After eating, Missy continued to pack her luggage, but in the end, Chase made her put some things away. Don't bring so many clothes. We'll buy new things when we get there. Episode 166, Her Brother's Call Although that was touching, Missy still insisted. I have to have things to change into. Even if I want to buy clothes, I still need something to wear while I'm there. This time, Chase had nothing to say. He had been sitting on the bed and talking about contracts with other companies. When he turned around, he found that it had been more than an hour and someone was still tidying up. Chase said faintly, Missy, are you not sleeping today? Missy heard his words and paused. She turned to look at Chase and smiled and laughed dryly, but stopped when she saw the man's eye getting heavier and heavier. I'll be right there. She quickly closed the suitcase and sat on the bed, and Chase's face eased up a little. Chase was about to touch Missy, but the phone she'd put aside suddenly vibrated. This time, Chase's face was dark. Missy laughed in her heart, but she said, Greg is calling me. She was amused by Chase's deflated expression, but she wouldn't show it so he could save face. Since it was his brother-in-law's call, Chase couldn't say anything. He could only change his posture and look at Missy with his head propped up. Missy, Independence Day is in three days. Come spend time with us tomorrow. Greg said, because of work and school, they rarely had time to get together, and a national holiday was a good opportunity. But Missy frowned and said apologetically, I'm sorry, Greg. I'm afraid I can't. Our company organized a vacation for a week. I'm really sorry. When you're on winter vacation, I'll definitely come hang out. Missy sighed helplessly. She knew how Greg felt, but she could only let him down this time. On the other side, Greg made a connection from Missy's words. Is everyone at the company going? Greg asked. 
He wanted to ask if she and Chase were going together, but he changed his mind. After all, he was his sister's husband, so it wasn't good for him to ask directly. Missy didn't realize that Greg's words had a hidden meaning and only thought that he was disappointed that she couldn't spend Independence Day with him. She said guiltily, Yes, the entire company is going. I'm really sorry, but I promise I'll spend New Year's with you. With that, Greg understood that Chase was going too. After all, the entire company was going, so as the CEO, Chase naturally would not miss it. Greg felt a sense of loss in his heart, but he didn't say much. After all, Missy had her own family now, and he couldn't rely on his sister all the time, but jealousy was inevitable. Greg's mood was low, but as long as Missy was happy, it was good. He suddenly asked, Missy, are you happy? Missy was stunned, but after she recovered, she smiled and said, I am happy. As she spoke, she looked back at the man beside her. After a moment of silence, Greg smiled. As long as you're happy, that's all. But you should rest. Good night. After saying that, Greg hung up the phone. Missy put the phone on the table and muttered. Greg has really grown up. She turned her head and met a pair of gloomy eyes. Chase looked straight at her. There was still some resentment in his eyes. You just said that you want to spend the new year with someone? Missy didn't know whether to laugh or cry. She didn't answer, but asked. Are you jealous? Chase was silent for a while and didn't say anything. In the end, he turned his back to Missy. The two of them just laid on the bed like that and fell into silence. After a while, Missy peeked at Chase. She was puzzled. Was he still angry? She turned around, reached out and poked his arm. The muscles were a little hard. Then she said tentatively, Don't be angry, it's just my brother. After a while, Chase said in a low voice, He's still someone else. I... Missy was speechless. She really didn't know how to talk to Chase now. His possessive desire was too strong. And when he felt awkward, he was like a sulking child. When they just met, Missy had thought that he was difficult to get along with and had a bad temper. But after being with him for a while, she realized that Chase was actually just childish. However, he was only childish around her, and all of his gentleness was given to Missy alone. Missy looked at the man's back and thought about her beautiful memories. She gave a small smile, and her eyes flashed with happiness. She hugged Chase from behind and could clearly feel the man's body stiffen. Then she said with a gentle and pleasant voice, Greg is my brother, and you are my husband. Both of you are the most important people to me. The corner of Chase's mouth rose both from Missy's hug and her explanation. He turned around to hug Missy and pressed her head against his chest. Then you have to spend New Year's Eve with me. The two of them were husband and wife, so they had to spend New Year's Eve together. How could Chase let Greg snatch his wife? Although that was his brother-in-law, that wasn't possible. All right, all right, all right. Missy helplessly nodded her head repeatedly. It seemed like she had to be more careful when speaking in the future. Otherwise, she might inadvertently cause this man to become jealous. Chase frowned. Why does it sound like it's a little forced on me? Missy's mouth twitched. 
she thought to herself. Your ears are really good, but you have a smile on your face. She then said, Isn't it normal to spend the new year with your husband? I'll sure make it up to my brother some way. Even though Chase knew that she was just trying to make him happy, he was still satisfied. All right, go to sleep. Good night, my wife. Chase kissed Missy on the forehead and hugged her to close his eyes. Missy wrapped her arms around the man's waist and felt at ease. The next morning, the two woke up feeling refreshed. They looked at each other and smiled. The trip is about to start, Missy said with anticipation. Episode 167, The Trip to Miami The plan was to go to Miami with their colleagues, but when they got to the airport, Missy didn't see anyone else from the company. She checked the flight and found out that it was only the two of them. Missy looked at Chase and shook her head, and Chase coughed unnaturally. I don't know about this either. You can ask Jeremy later. He arranged it. After saying that, he took the boarding pass from her and prepared to board the plane with her luggage. Although Missy guessed that Chase might have done this on purpose, she went along with it. An hour later, the plane landed on the ground. When they left the airport, Missy clearly felt the hot wind blowing against her face. The air was mixed with slight humidity and a salty smell. The hotel they were staying at wasn't far from the beach. The floor-to-ceiling windows of the room faced the sea, and they could clearly see the scene of the waves hitting the beach. Let's unpack and catch up with the main group. We can't fall behind. They had just contacted their colleagues, and Missy found out that they had changed clothes and were at the beach. Chase saw Missy's anxious expression and smiled helplessly. He took a swimsuit from his suitcase and handed it to Missy, saying unhurriedly, Do you want to wear this and go to the beach? Missy remembered at that moment that she was wearing a pair of denim flares with a white chiffon shirt. Although she didn't feel that something was wrong with her outfit, long pants were indeed a little inappropriate for the beach. After changing her clothes, Missy took Chase's hand and quickly rushed to the beach. The heat hit their faces, and the sunlight reflected on the surface of the sea, sparkling and shining. The waves washed away the footprints left behind by the people playing on the beach. Chase had booked this entire section of the beach, so there was no one other than Luther Inc. employees. The women were in groups of three or five, lying on the beach chairs under umbrellas and chatting. The men were fiddling with the grill to prepare for the bonfire party that night. Missy, over here! Another secretary in the office saw Missy, so she stood up and waved her hand. But when she saw Chase following behind her, she immediately stiffened. She'd forgotten the CEO was coming on this trip. Missy didn't mind and ran over. The sun was fierce and Missy was wearing a sun hat, but she was running too fast and the hat flew off. After falling behind... Missy caught Chase to get it and kept running. When everyone saw Chase obediently pick the beach hat up, they couldn't help but feel a chill. They didn't expect that the usually high and mighty CEO would actually be defeated by a young woman. Missy, come over here. Will Mr. Luther be unhappy? The woman who called Missy over quietly observed Chase and asked worriedly, it's fine, he won't mind. Missy noticed that other than them, their colleagues from other departments were playing in the water. Missy's colleagues saw through her thoughts and immediately put down their fruit juices and pulled her to the beach. 
However, when her toes got wet, the memory of Kelly pushing her into the pool resurfaced, and she couldn't resist the fear in her heart. I'm a little thirsty, so I'm going to go get some water. You guys go on. Missy ran back under the umbrella and sat there watching them swimming around in the sea. Although she really wanted to be with them, she couldn't really swim, and she was afraid of the water. Her colleagues kept inviting her, but she could only refuse again and again. A deep male voice spoke beside her, giving Missy a scare. Why don't you go in? When she realized it was Chase, she unhappily gave him a light punch. Why don't you go? Missy asked back, her eyes fixed on the people playing in the sea. Chase didn't say anything but held her hand. Then he suddenly stood up. Missy, who was unprepared, almost spilled the juice in her hand all over herself. She frowned and glared at him as she put the juice down. What are you doing? Going back. Chase's words confused Missy, and by the time she figured it out, he had already taken her back to the hotel. The group on the beach saw them leave and whispered to each other, discussing the matter. It was a pity that they'd all been focused on themselves, so they had no idea what had happened. Chase led Missy to the lobby of the hotel and talked to the receptionist at the front desk alone. The distance between them was quite far, and Missy couldn't hear him clearly, but then he brought her to the hotel's pool. Missy pointed at the spacious pool and looked at him in confusion. What are we doing here? I'll teach you how to swim. Chase started to warm up as he spoke. He saw Missy still standing there in a daze and got her to follow his rhythm. At the beach, he'd noticed that her eyes hadn't left the sea. Her colleagues called her over, but she refused, and her eyes revealed her fear. He understood that her accident had left a shadow in her heart. Chase stood in the pool and reached out to Missy. Missy held on to the railing by the pool and didn't let go, refusing his invitation. Chase steeled his heart, grabbed her hand, and pulled her into his embrace. The sudden weightlessness scared Missy so much that she closed her eyes tightly. Her legs were coiled around Chase's body. One arm hugged his neck, and the other kept hitting the surface of the water. Seeing Missy's fearful expression, Chase laughed loudly. Missy was so angry that she immediately let go of him and pushed him away. But because of her buoyancy in the water, she couldn't stand stably and once again coiled around his waist. Listen to me. Let your legs go first and hug my neck to slowly relax your body. Chase gently patted her back. After comforting her, he had her try to use the buoyancy of the water to slowly start paddling. Although her movements were a little clumsy, with Chase's help and support, Missy could move a few steps. After that, she sank, swallowing a few mouthfuls of water. With a good start, Missy gradually mustered her courage. Chase supported her waist and let her float in the water. Perhaps it was because of Chase's company, but Missy realized that swimming was not as difficult as she'd imagined. She could rely on her own strength to take a few steps in the water, and her fear of the water started to disappear. Episode 168 Missy's Discovery This beautiful scene was seen by another person in the dark. April couldn't help but sigh. Chase looked so much better than that old man. When she thought of Winston, 
April frowned and gave a look of disgust. But Chase's posture in the water pulled her back from her thoughts. April stood there and held her breath. It was as if her soul would drift away with the wind in the next moment. But she did not expect that at that moment, a pair of big hands would pull her to a hidden place. April didn't have time to react. She only saw that ugly face. What are you doing? April looked at the person in front of her. She didn't know why, but when she saw him at this moment, she couldn't help but feel disgusted. Winston looked at her and smiled. He thought that he was good looking, but April was revulsed. The difference between him and Chase was like heaven and earth. However, she still had to welcome him with a smile. After all, she couldn't afford to offend him now. Winston said, April, why are you hiding here? I missed you. I don't want to leave you for a moment. If he were a handsome man, she would have been happy to hear him say that. However, this was an ugly middle-aged man with an ugly figure, and such a person had to say such a passionate sentence to her. It was really disgusting. April lowered her head and said, Mr. Donetti, this isn't the right place for this. He had pulled her into a closed room, so April knew what he wanted to do. She had no way to reject him and could only make excuses, hoping that he would let her go today. Winston had been drooling over her body. So how could he leave so easily? He held April's face and spat out repulsive words. Don't worry, this place is hidden so no one will find it. Besides, Mr. Luther has already booked the entire swimming pool. There's no one here except you and me. It was no hidden place. It was just a storeroom. Winston looked at the delicate and pretty face of the woman in front of him. The intentional tears in her eyes made her look even more delicate. Upon seeing that, Winston could no longer control himself. He ran his hands over her body, not knowing how to be gentle, and pressed his lips against hers. April looked at the person in front of her. The corner of her mouth curved into a bitter smile because she knew that the situation had already reached this point and there was no way to escape. She hated it. Why did Missy have bright and beautiful things while she had to face this? Beside the pool, a phone buzzed. Chase, your phone is ringing. Missy noticed the sound of the phone and looked over at Chase. Chase heard Missy's voice and the sound of the phone. He couldn't help but smile and walk to Missy's side. He picked up the phone and whispered into Missy's ear. I'll come back later. Missy nodded, and Chase walked away, holding the phone in his hands. Seeing Chase's back as he left, Missy could not help but close her eyes. She just lay there comfortably. The sun felt really good. After a while, Chase returned and Missy asked, What was that just now? Chase's mouth curved into a beautiful smile. It was the owner of this resort. He wants to talk about work. Missy could not help but smile and said, Oh. Seeing that Missy didn't really understand, Chase said, you go on and rest. I'll go over. Missy knew that Chase was worried that she would be tired, so she nodded. All right, you go and deal with your own matters. I'll take care of myself. Chase changed his clothes and left, and Missy took a moment to stretch. 
it was time for her to change her clothes. Thinking of that, Missy put on a towel and walked to the changing room. At that moment, she heard a strange sound coming from a room. When Missy heard it, her entire body was on edge. She thought that she had to be mistaken. However, when she calmed down, the sound coming from the room made her face turn red and her heart beat faster. Her eyes flashed with a hint of doubt. She cracked the door open to look inside and discovered that it was a small storage room. Who would do things in such a place? The most important thing was that the people here were probably her colleagues. Curiosity made her look over. She turned her head slightly and saw two people hugging and kissing inside. Using the crack of the door and a better angle, Missy could clearly see who these two people were. April. One was actually April? She had been promoted quickly. Was this the reason? Missy was surprised. When she thought about how she had also seen someone from behind previously, she compared the scenarios in her mind. The person she unintentionally saw that day was also April. She covered her mouth in shock and didn't let out a sound. If the people inside noticed her, all three of them would be embarrassed. Episode 169 he was in a complicated mood. Missy stood there for a long time. Finally, she got a hold of herself and left without alerting the people inside. She didn't intend to expose them. It was none of her business. It was just that what she saw today made her eyes pop out. She returned to the pool and laid down beside it. Her emotions extremely complicated. April used to be a good person at heart, even though she seemed to feel inferior. However, if April really used those methods to get promoted, you just couldn't judge a book by its cover. Missy couldn't help but frown. If that really was the case, then she had to rethink how she saw April. If that was really the case, April's way of doing things was simply too disappointing. Missy once again closed her eyes. She didn't want to continue thinking about that problem, and her mind felt chaotic. Lying on the lounge chair under the nourishment of the sun, Missy unknowingly fell asleep. In the afternoon, Chase couldn't find Missy, so he walked over to see a woman lying beside the swimming pool in a bikini and a towel. When Chase saw that, his face couldn't help but darken. She looked too attractive just sleeping by herself, unafraid of being seen. Chase walked over, but Missy was still sleeping soundly. He took off his jacket and wrapped it around her, picking her up. She was basically wearing nothing, so he didn't want to let go. He was glad he booked the entire pool so no one else could barge in on her. Thinking of that, Chase's eyes couldn't help but darken even more. Missy felt someone beside her and opened her eyes. When she saw who it was, she couldn't help but be slightly stunned. Chase, you're back. She was curious about how she'd fallen asleep since she'd just been thinking about something. She hadn't even felt Chase when he came to her side. Chase had a smile in his eyes. You fell asleep. Yeah. He seemed to have sensed that the woman didn't know what she had done. He couldn't help but frown slightly and repeat it again. You fell asleep. 
Yeah, I know. Missy stretched. I know. What happened to you? Why are you repeating it? Is there a problem with me sleeping? It was only human nature to fall asleep. Missy didn't know why Chase was angry. She spoke as if nothing had happened, which made Chase speechless. It's fortunate I booked the place today, but I can't guarantee that no outsiders will come in. If someone found you sleeping alone like that. Before he finished his words, Missy understood at this moment why he had such an expression. The corner of her mouth couldn't help but curl up into a beautiful smile. She knew. He was just jealous. That was why he was saying this. When she thought of that, Missy's heart felt as sweet as honey. All right, all right, Chase. I get it. Don't worry, nothing will happen to me, and I'll be more careful in the future. She promised. Can you let go of me now? I'll put on some clothes. Missy stared straight at the man in front of her with an impish smile. Chase's eyes flashed slightly, and he almost let go of her. Why hadn't he realized that this woman was so playful in the past? Since you know, you should pay more attention. Chase spat out the words, but he couldn't bear to let go of her. Missy quickly nodded, indicating that she already knew. Yes, yes. Missy changed her clothes and went to the hotel lobby to eat. During lunch, Missy saw that April was also there. Usually Missy was chatty, but now she didn't say anything. She only looked at April and saw April's red and swollen lips. So she knew that what she'd seen was real. She hadn't been seeing things. When she'd fallen asleep, she convinced herself she'd imagined the whole thing. But now that she saw April in front of her, she couldn't help but realize the truth. April's eyes had changed. But April also felt that Missy's gaze was a little strange. Because of what had happened today, she was also ashamed. As she ate, she couldn't help but bite her lips every time she took a bite. Her heart was extremely conflicted and guilty. Missy looked at the person in front of her and thought about the matter. Then she put down her fork after less than two bites and said, April? April was slightly stunned. Yes, Missy? What do you think of this place? April was surprised, but she still replied. It's not bad, but I do want to do some shopping. Not bad. Missy gave a slight smile and told April to take care of herself, and April felt that Missy knew about what had happened. Thinking of that, April's eyes darkened a lot. Episode 170 Missy's Questioning After lunch, Missy returned to her room and sat for a while. Then she found an opportunity to look for April. April wasn't expecting Missy to come to her room and immediately thought of what Missy asked her at lunch. So she stood at the door in a daze. Missy gave a beautiful smile. Will you invite me in? Missy's smile made it seem like nothing was wrong, like she didn't know what April had done, and April heaved a sigh of relief. Then with a smile on her face, she said, Missy, please come in. She made some coffee and sat opposite Missy. 
and Missy noticed what was on April's neck. Her eyes couldn't help but darken as she asked, What's the matter with your neck? April suddenly heard Missy's voice and was stunned. She looked at her blankly and then quickly covered her neck. Missy asked, Did you hook up with Winston? April sat still in shock and shame and said, Missy, I... She jumped down from her seat and looked at Missy pitifully, saying, Missy, I, I didn't want to. I don't want to be like this. It's just that Winston sought me out. If I refuse, I'll lose everything I have right now. April tried her best to be a victim, hoping to show that she was miserable. Missy looked at the person in front of her indifferently and asked, is that true? April thought Missy believed her, and she hid her smile. Missy, you must believe me. It's all true. Don't you know me? How could I possibly do such a thing? April cried loudly, and her eyes became red and swollen. But Missy was clear-headed, and she didn't completely believe April. She took a deep breath and said, I believe you, but let me ask you, is Winston married? When April heard Missy's words, she remembered that she had once seen the title, Wife, on Winston's phone. But in fact, Winston claimed to everyone that he was not married. So everyone believed that he was an unmarried man. April knew why Missy asked her that question, so she answered. No, Winston is not married. When Missy heard that, she couldn't help but sigh in relief. At least April wasn't a homewrecker. Missy, can you not tell anyone else about this? April asked. Missy frowned slightly. Missy, I beg you, can you keep it a secret? If everyone finds out, not only will my reputation be damaged, but everything I have now will be gone. It wasn't easy for me to climb up to the top floor. As April spoke, her eyes teared up, and she looked really pitiful. Missy couldn't fight her heart. She helped April up from the ground and said, Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Only then did April get up from the ground and sit opposite Missy again, sobbing the whole way. I can give you my opinion if you want it, Missy said. April raised her head, her eyes filled with tears. Missy smiled. Of course, this is only my opinion. You can decide for yourself what you want to do. April said, Please tell me. Missy only glanced. You and Mr. Donetti are both the dots. And since things have already gone so far, April was anxious to explain. Missy, I don't want to be like this. Winston isn't engaged or married, so you're basically a normal couple. So why hide? Can't you try to get along with him? That's just my suggestion, but it's up to you to make your own decision. Missy casually shrugged her shoulders, and the smile on her face was indifferent. Her view of April had changed. April wrinkled her brow slightly, but it seemed to be forced. Missy, I... 
I don't have that kind of relationship with Mr. Donetti. And I will end this relationship as soon as possible. Missy stared at April. Her originally gentle eyes had become sharp. She didn't like this version of her. April kept begging. Missy, I'll be so grateful if you keep this a secret. You have always been my hero. April's tears and snot were all over the place. But Missy could not help but feel a chill. This is the path you've chosen, and I don't have the right to interfere with you. After Missy answered, she got up and left. Episode 171 Doubtful Ever since Missy found out about what happened to her, April paid attention to Missy's actions. She was ashamed of her relationship with Winston, and if Missy accidentally leaked it out, she would become the laughingstock of the entire company. Then Chase would also look down on her. And although Missy had promised her, April didn't think that she would be able to keep the secret. So whenever she saw Missy, April's eyes wouldn't leave her. When they were eating, April saw Missy talking and laughing with the female colleague. But that colleague didn't get along with her and even made a lot of noise because of her promotion. April took a glass of champagne from the waiter and walked over. When the colleague saw her, her face sank and Missy didn't understand and even thought it was because of something she said. Miss Danvers, I've suddenly got a headache. I'm going to go rest. After saying that, the person shot a glance at April. Missy put down her glass and asked with concern. Are you all right? Do you need to see a doctor? The colleague waved her hand. I just saw something I shouldn't have seen. She then put down her glass and left the dining room. April was sensitive and thought that person must have known something. She clenched her fist and suppressed the panic in her heart, but pretended to be curious and asked. Missy, what did you talk about with her just now? She didn't seem happy. Missy turned around and picked up a piece of cake on the table. She took a bite and said inarticulately, It's nothing. She said she wasn't feeling well, so she went to rest. I think she might have caught a cold. Didn't you guys talk about office gossip? April kept staring at Missy, afraid that she would miss out on something important. Missy thought for a while and shook her head. No. Then she added, But she tried to tell me a piece of gossip from before I started working here. I wasn't interested, so I didn't let her tell me. Her words made April alert, and she felt like she was the topic. She gulped down her wine and fiercely slammed her glass onto the table, which almost fell to the ground. If Missy hadn't grabbed it in time, it would have attracted the attention of others. What's wrong with you? Missy softly asked as she steadied the glass. Nothing. My hand suddenly slipped. April found a shoddy excuse and left the room. April hid in a dark corner and stared at Missy. When she saw Chase appear beside her, she subconsciously took a step forward. But then she saw Winston and all kinds of humiliation surged into her heart. She had only gotten this job after making a disgusting bargain, but Missy enjoyed everything with ease 
and even knew about her dirty past. April was unable to suppress the sulky feeling in her heart. Now that Missy knew her weakness, she could let others know any time and anywhere. She had to find Missy's secret and use it to threaten her to feel at ease. As for Winston, he was constantly reminding her of their actions. If there were any small mistakes, he would be like a time bomb that could blow her to pieces at any time. She had to find a way to get rid of those two people. However, she could not openly end her relationship with Winston. If he casually gave an order, she would be let go in an instant, so she had to find someone else to support her. After the meal, April received a call from Winston asking her to come to his room. April was worried that such a blatant act would be noticed by others. If Missy had found out, someone else certainly could, and she wasn't willing to take the risk. But when he realized she was trying to refuse, Winston was unhappy. He snorted coldly and said, April, you're getting bolder and bolder now. You aren't getting any ideas, are you? What are you talking about? Can't you allow me to rest? April pinched her throat and pretended to be shy. Tonight, I'll wait for you outside the hotel. After saying that, she hung up without waiting for Winston's response. Although he was unhappy with April's behavior, Winston really liked the way she acted. He hadn't realized she liked him so much, but the sneaky side of her surprised him. Missy returned to her room and was about to rest when she unexpectedly received a phone call from April asking her to take a look at the stars. Missy opened the curtains and looked at the sea under the moonlight. It was beautiful, and Missy wanted to see more, so she agreed. The temperature of the beach at night was different, so Missy took a black shawl from her suitcase and wrapped it around her body. Then she thought of Chase, who hadn't returned yet. She took out a piece of paper and wrote a few words before leaving the room. The beach at night was not noisy as it was during the day. The sea breeze blew on Missy's cheeks and brought a slight chill. The sea was calmer, and the moonlight shone on it, giving off a hint of tranquility and mystery. But the chill hit her heart. Missy pulled on her shawl and instantly regretted her choice. She should have worn a coat. She came to the grove of trees, and the dim sight made Missy uncomfortable. It was far from the hotel, and there was no lighting, so she didn't know why April wanted to meet there. Just as she was about to take out her phone and turn on the flashlight, she heard a slight rubbing sound. She thought that was April standing there, so she ran over. But when she got closer, she found that there was more than one person. There were two pressed against a tree trunk and kissing passionately. The clear and cold moonlight passed through the colorful cracks of the palm fronds and hit the two of them. Missy could see that they were April and Winston. Why had April asked Winston out when they were meeting? Missy really didn't want to continue watching the two of them being so intimate. But as she turned around and left, she accidentally stepped on a dried branch. The sudden sound made the two people beside the tree stop in an instant. Missy also realized that something was wrong. She turned her head and saw Winston's patrolling eyes. Episode 172 The Cute True Reaction The sudden appearance of someone else gave Winston a fright. 
He immediately withdrew his hands from April's body, tidied his clothes, and looked at her unhappily. Missy lowered her head and used her hand to cover her face. She said in a low voice, Sorry, I was just passing by and didn't see anything. After she said that, she deliberately looked at April through the gaps of her fingers. April had been hiding behind Winston while tidying her clothes. She had no intention of explaining at all. Missy immediately turned around and left. She was worried that if she continued to stay, something would happen sooner. And even if she explained, she was afraid no one would believe her. Seeing her leave, Winston became restless. His sexy plans had been ruined, and he couldn't even look at April. Don't worry, nothing will happen. April hugged Winston, who was pacing back and forth, and buried her head into his chest. She teased him with her hands, trying to carry on. Winston pushed her hands away. That's all for today. If she saw, perhaps other people will find out. We should stop meeting for the time being. April couldn't stop smiling when she heard Winston announce that they would temporarily end their relationship. In the darkness, Winston didn't realize that she was lowering her head. You don't have to worry. Missy won't tell anyone, so no one will find out. You... April gave a slightly reluctant look, which made Winston's heart itch. If it had been someone else, Winston might have cared. He could have made nearly anyone keep quiet to keep their job. But that had been Missy. So he comforted April and went back to the hotel alone, leaving April behind. When Winston disappeared, April walked to the bushes at the side and picked up a miniature camera. There was only one path, so anyone who wanted to come here had to go through this place. April looked at the filmed footage. In her dim vision, she could only see that there were two people kissing. Although Winston had his back to the camera, Missy's face appeared. April had hidden behind Winston, not appearing at all. Even though she felt disgusted, April kept all of it. She put the camera in her bag and took it back to the hotel. At the hotel's entrance, she smiled. She had already prepared this camera before the two of them came, and she had been waiting for Missy to appear. The next day, because of what had happened the night before, Missy wanted April to ask what was going on but couldn't find her. She asked and found out that she wasn't feeling well, so she stayed in her room to rest. Missy was worried that it was because of what happened the night before, so she took out her phone and dialed April's number. But April didn't pick up, so she could only helplessly hang up. What's wrong? Did something happen? Chase saw that Missy had been absent-minded and asked with concern. Missy shook her head. I'm fine. She didn't want to tell him about April and Winston. After all, this was a small private matter, and she had promised she wouldn't tell anyone else. It was impossible for her to break her promise. Well, let me take you someplace. Chase held Missy's hand and took her out of the hotel. Along the way, Missy asked a few times about their destination. 
chase looked mysterious, which aroused her curiosity. While Chase was not paying attention, Missy secretly looked up information about Miami, but he discovered it, so she put her phone away. She wouldn't know what Chase wanted to do until they reached their destination. After getting out of the car, Missy found that they had arrived at a diving club. She looked at Chase suspiciously and followed him in. Hello, how can I help you? The receptionist asked with a smile. I have an appointment. After saying that, Chase gave his name, and someone brought the two of them to change into diving clothes. Missy refused at first. She had just learned how to swim and was worried she would drown. Chase could only helplessly shake his head. He stretched out his finger and tapped her head, sighing slightly. You worry too much. Miss, the diving beach is only five meters deep at most, and you'll be accompanied by professionals. The employee patiently explained, but Missy was still a little worried. When she got to the beach and saw the rippling waves, Missy took a step back. Chase pulled her hand and urged her over. After telling her what to take note of during the process, he took her to the sea. The first time they went into the sea, Missy gripped Chase's hand, and the moment she buried her head into the water, Missy closed her eyes. Chase, who was beside her, knocked on her goggles before she slowly opened her eyes. The sudden appearance of the colorful little fish stunned her. The jellyfish floating in the seaweed was moving up and down, bit by bit. The colorful corals leaned against the charred rock as if they were enjoying the sun. Occasionally, one or two octopuses would accidentally touch it and spit out black ink, which instantly turned the seawater in front of her into a mass of black fog. Missy didn't think there could be such a magical place. It was like a miniature world. After the voyage ended, Missy looked as if she was not satisfied as she looked at the transparent seawater behind her. This place is really beautiful. If only I could stay here forever. After changing her clothes, Missy was full of compliments. Who is this person? At first, they were unwilling to go into the water. Chase couldn't help but tease. Missy punched him lightly. It was his fault for being so secretive. She had the illusion that if she had known at the beginning, she wouldn't have acted like she was afraid. Now he had ammunition for teasing her. Chase didn't mind. He felt that her reaction was the cutest. Episode 173 Things were getting out of hand. When Chase and Missy returned, both of them were carrying big and small shopping bags. This was a really fruitful trip. I got to see a beautiful underwater world, and I bought a lot of things I've always wanted. Missy said, but she paused as she looked toward the hotel lobby. At that moment, the lobby was filled with people. There was a lot of noise, and the company's employees were all gathered and discussing something animatedly. Chase followed Missy's line of sight, but his expression didn't change. Before they walked over, they heard a woman's harsh questioning in the middle of the crowd. Who's that woman? Missy put her things aside and squeezed through the crowd with Chase. 
Winston was standing there with his head down, and in front of him was a slightly plump middle-aged woman arguing like a shrew. In front of this woman, Winston was as obedient as a child as he got scolded. Is this how you repay me? Winston, you are a hypocrite! If you don't give me an explanation today, we're through! Rachel Dinetti shouted and actually rushed forward and grabbed Winston's ear. More and more people came around, and even some of the hotel staff came over to watch the show. Chase's dark eyes were gloomy, but Missy clearly felt this woman's displeasure. However, neither of them went out to stop her. They intended to discover what exactly had happened. Can you not embarrass yourself here? I don't understand what you're talking about. If you have something to say, we can talk about it at home. Winston said half-heartedly. I'm embarrassing myself? Whose fault is that? Don't you know what you've done? At this moment, Winston felt that he had lost all his dignity because of Rachel's behavior in front of everyone. He angrily moved his arm away from Rachel and pushed her away. The woman staggered a few steps back and almost fell down. When she stabilized herself, her face turned red from anger. She raised her head and roared. You hit me? The woman's roar rang through the lobby. At that moment, Rachel felt wronged. She worked diligently as a housewife, compromising for Winston, but this guy was doing her dirty. Winston immediately realized what he had done after being yelled at. He quickly rushed over to support Rachel and said anxiously, Listen to me, it's not what you think. No? Rachel retorted and smiled sadly. Then she took out her phone and pointed it at Winston. There was a video of a man hugging and kissing a woman. Due to the dim light, you could only see the woman's back. But since the camera was facing Winston, you could clearly see his face. Seeing the video, Winston was stunned for a moment. When he reacted, his face instantly darkened. He was so frightened that he snatched the phone and threw it away at lightning speed. You believe that kind of thing? Winston tried to sound confident, but in fact, he was nervous. How did a video of him and April together yesterday get to Rachel? The phone landed at the feet of an employee who picked it up and saw what was on the screen. I didn't expect Winston to be this kind of person. You never know. He's married, but he still lied to everyone, and he's even messing around with someone else. All the criticism rushed toward Winston, and April watched without a trace of emotion. All of this was Winston's own fault and she was just a pitiful victim. The phone finally got to Missy, who looked at the familiar scene and frowned slightly. Didn't she see this in the forest last night? Who on earth secretly filmed Winston in April? At that moment, everyone's attention was focused on the drama between Winston and Rachel, so no one noticed Missy's expression. Rachel hadn't expected Winston to suddenly throw her phone, and she was so frightened that she trembled. When Winston heard the increasing criticisms around him, he was momentarily flustered and raised his hand to slap Rachel. Don't embarrass yourself here anymore. Get lost. Winston said in annoyance. 
Irritation mixed with fear swept through his heart. After Rachel made such a fuss, how could he still stay in his job? When he compared her to the young and gentle April, Rachel's arrogance was obvious and formed a sharp contrast in Winston's heart. As a result, he hated his wife even more. Get lost? You have a new lover, so you forgot your old love, right? Rachel said in pain. Suddenly, the corner of her lips curled up, and she laughed mockingly, touched her belly, and muttered to herself. Baby, I didn't expect that your father wouldn't want you even before you came into this world. What did you say? Winston's heart skipped a beat. He had a bad feeling. What did she mean? Rachel raised her head and stared at Winston, her voice filled with endless sarcasm. I'm pregnant. It's been two months. Although she hated Winston's actions, when mentioning the child, Rachel was still happy at the idea of being a mother. But before the child was born, it had been betrayed. Such a child would never be happy. Maybe it would be better if it weren't born into this world. But Rachel still felt her heart bleeding. She wanted this baby, but she didn't want the child to have no father from the moment it was born. Thinking like that, Rachel closed her eyes, pained. Clear tears rolled down her face. She turned around and sighed. Let's get a divorce. No, no, Rachel. Let me explain. I was just angry, so don't be impulsive. At that moment, the disdain and anger Winston felt were gone. All that was left was fear. Winston grabbed Rachel's clothes before kneeling down and begging her bitterly. I know I was wrong, but I beg you. Please don't abort our child. This is our flesh and blood. You wouldn't be so cruel, right? Episode 174 Make a guess about the dinner. Winston felt so regretful that his stomach was turning. Not only was he caught red-handed by his wife, but he was also about to lose his own family. If he had known earlier that Rachel was pregnant, he would never have fooled around. The two of them had always wanted a child, but Rachel struggled to get pregnant, and she had a bad temper, so she often scolded Winston badly. As a result, Winston started to feel disgusted. No one noticed that among the crowd, a woman was watching with the corners of her lips curled up complacently. Her head was slightly raised, showing her pride. At that moment, April was looking at Winston with pity. She could finally get rid of this man. Moreover, not only did she get rid of Winston, but she could also use this to draw Missy's attention. Thinking of that, April felt all the blood in her body boiling. When she thought of Missy's misfortune, she was extremely happy. Chase and Missy's expression had turned completely cold. The two of them had watched this farce from beginning to end. Unlike the others who were watching the show without much thought, Chase felt that it was shameful. After all, Winston was an executive of Luther, Inc. Every action he took represented the company, and this was an embarrassment. His breathing was a little hurried as he walked out of the crowd with a frosty face. His tone was calm but stern. Everyone, go back to your rooms. Seeing him... 
all the employees cowered in fear. They all shut their mouths and dispersed. Missy stayed beside Chase with a complicated expression. She hadn't expected that after she found out about April's relationship with Winston, Winston's wife would come looking for him. When Winston looked up and saw Missy, he got up from the ground and rushed to Missy's side. His eyes red. He asked, Did you do it? Missy was stunned. But just as Winston was about to touch her, he was blocked by Chase. Chase's face was cold, and his words made people shiver. Mr. Donetti, you must be a bold person. Rachel, who was by the side, heard Winston's words and shivered. She ran to Missy, grabbed her shirt, and asked, hopefully, Do you know something? Who is that woman? I... Missy opened and closed her mouth. She was dazed and didn't know how to answer. Seeing that, Winston confirmed the thoughts in his heart and roared. It was you. Why did you destroy my family? It wasn't me! Missy argued. She turned her head and didn't know what to say. At that moment, she was also a mess. Chase's eyes turned cold, and he gave Winston a warning look. Mr. Donetti, you can do what you want, but you can't speak nonsense. Chase's tone was laced with a deep threat. When the people who were walking upstairs saw the turn of events, they stopped for a moment. Chase glanced around and said in a deep voice, Let's go to the reception room and have a good talk. He hadn't expected that this matter would involve Missy. But seeing how she looked just now, she seemed to have some insider information. Chase thought to himself, they walked toward the hotel reception room, and Rachel hesitated for a moment but followed them. In the reception room, Chase sat on the sofa. His pitch black eyes bored into his executive. Winston, do you know how much your actions have affected the company's image? Without giving him a chance to explain, Chase said coldly, I will not pursue the losses you have caused to the company for now. From now on, you are not an employee of Luther's. Chase's face was tense, and the atmosphere in the reception room was so oppressive that it made everyone's heart palpitate. When Winston heard Chase's words, he panicked. Mr. Luther, please give me another chance. I promise I won't make such a mistake again. Rachel stood at the side, satisfied with Chase's judgment. Winston getting fired would be a good lesson for him, so that he could be more obedient. Chase frowned impatiently. He never liked to repeat what he said, and no one could change his mind. Missy felt his displeasure and said, Winston, you know Mr. Luther's temper. It's better not to waste everyone's time. She didn't have a good impression of the kind of man who had a family and was still carrying on affairs with others. Furthermore, Winston's attitude toward her made Missy even less willing to help him. Hearing Missy's words, Winston glanced at her and said fiercely, It's all because of you. If you hadn't given that video to my wife, how would I... Video? When he brought up the video, Chase and Missy frowned at the same time, and Missy was the first to speak. She looked at Rachel and asked, Where did the video on your phone come from? Rachel knew who Chase was, and from Missy's tone, 
she could tell she wasn't a nobody. So she answered honestly. It was sent in an anonymous email. An anonymous email? Chase frowned, and an image flashed through his mind. He suddenly remembered that the photo of Missy and Seb having dinner was also sent from an anonymous email to the chief editor of the magazine. Could there be some sort of connection? Chase's heart shivered, and he said in a deep voice, Show me the email. Hopefully he was just thinking too much. Rachel respectfully handed her phone to Chase without knowing what was going on. But when he saw the email, Chase's face sank. Missy saw that something was wrong with his expression and went over to ask, What's wrong? As Chase looked at the mailbox, Missy frowned. Is there something strange about the email address? Chase shook his head. I don't know. He copied the email and sent it to himself, and then returned the phone to Rachel. It's fine now. You guys can go. Okay. Rachel said goodbye in a daze. She dragged Winston away, and they could hear her cursing as they left. I'll teach you a lesson when we get back. In the reception room, Chase sent the anonymous email he got from Rachel to Jeremy and then called him. Investigate this email and see if it's the same as the anonymous email from before. Episode 175 Due to Winston's drama, Missy and Chase were no longer in the mood to have fun and they returned to their room early to wait for Jeremy's news. Missy was absent-minded, which attracted Chase's attention. In the lobby, when Winston saw her, he immediately ran over to question her. Was she the one who did this? Although the situation was chaotic, Chase noticed that although Missy had been stammering and didn't know what exactly was going on, he could tell from her eyes that she was hiding something. Missy wouldn't talk about it for the time being, and Chase didn't force her. He walked to the dining table and poured a cup of water for her and put it in her hands. Missy took it and said thanks. She took a small sip and looked at him from the side several times, wondering if she should tell Chase about what happened earlier. She had thought that April and Winston were both unmarried and hadn't wanted to announce it because she was afraid that the office relationship wouldn't last long. However, Winston's wife Rachel's appearance today made her understand that everything April told her was a lie. As for whether April was cheated on or not, she wasn't sure. I... I have something to tell you. Missy put down the cup in her hand, straightened herself to face Chase, and took a deep breath. I originally promised I wouldn't talk about this, but now that all this has happened, I think I should tell you. Go ahead. Chase nodded. He understood that she wanted to tell him about Winston. I know about the video that Winston's wife Rachel was talking about. Missy told him everything that happened the night before, but she really didn't know who recorded the video. You're saying that you were near the location of the video last night and the woman in the video was April? Chase frowned and asked. He leaned against the sofa, crossed an arm in front of his chest, and rubbed his chin with the other hand. He was thinking about something. Then was there a third person besides you? Missy thought about it and shook her head. I'm not sure. It was too dark, and after I saw the two of them, I quickly left. Missy hadn't known that Winston would be out there and that he and April would be doing private things. When she saw it, she was shocked and embarrassed and only wanted to escape. 
She didn't even know whether the two of them had returned to the hotel or not. After hearing Missy's words, Chase had a trace of doubt and asked, You told me that there was something going on yesterday. Missy nodded. Yesterday, I was prepared to rest, but April called, so I went out. She said that she had something to do with me, but she didn't tell me clearly what it was. When I went there and saw that, I didn't ask and came right back. This morning, she'd been trying to find April to ask about it, but she hadn't picked up, and Missy and Chase went out. Then they came back to all of this, and she wasn't in the mood to think about what April had been looking for her for. Missy finally realized that something wasn't right, but she also felt that she might have been thinking too much of it. Yesterday, perhaps April really had wanted to spend time with her, but Winston had just appeared suddenly. But if Winston had unexpectedly appeared there, how would the video explain it? It would be too much of a coincidence that someone would have happened to see them, filmed it, and handed it over to Winston's wife. No matter how she thought about it, there was something wrong with this. As the two of them sat confused, Chase's phone rang and broke the silence in the room. It was Jeremy's name on the phone. Chase immediately picked up the phone and turned it on speaker mode. Mr. Luther, I found out that the IP address of the email you gave me was the same as the one who contacted the magazine. The purpose of the two emails is clear. Jeremy didn't say it out loud, but the three of them understood that the person was targeting Missy. Chase looked at Missy and didn't say anything. After asking some questions related to the matter, he hung up the phone. Since Missy had just mentioned April, he felt that there were a lot of things that might not be as simple as they seemed on the surface. Missy leaned on the sofa and stared at Chase's phone without moving. Jeremy's words kept ringing in her ears. She knew he'd been talking about her. When she'd started at Luther Inc., she didn't have any conflicts with anyone besides Kelly, and no one but her co-workers and Greg knew about her coming to Miami. From her understanding of Kelly, she knew she wouldn't do something like this. And if she'd come to Miami, she would definitely have shown up in front of them. She wouldn't have hidden behind their backs and played tricks. Do you have any suspects? Chase asked. No, I can't think of anyone I've offended. Thinking about it, besides Kelly, there was no one else. Did you notice that April never appears in the video? There was no one but the three of you involved in the incident last night, so perhaps it was her. Chase pointed out, he was suspicious of April. Missy didn't believe Chase's analysis. She didn't think that doing something like this would benefit April. It might even have affected her reputation, and April wouldn't be that stupid. All of this had caused quite a stir, so Chase had to deal with this matter seriously. No matter what, April cannot continue to stay in the company. We'll send her home. No! Missy rejected Chase's suggestion without thinking. We haven't fully investigated, and even if it is a little suspicious, there's still no evidence, right? If the truth isn't what you think it is, won't we be wrongly accusing her? In a situation where there was no evidence, if they randomly fired someone, it would only cause people to gossip. Furthermore, Missy didn't believe that this was done by April at all. What they needed to do now was to find evidence to discover the truth. Chase didn't think that they needed evidence. Instead, they needed to take serious action. However, Missy was unwilling and kept begging him, 
and he looked at Missy's pitiful face and finally agreed to what she said. He would cooperate with her to find evidence to make a decision. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.